You're listening to the Ask Ava podcast, where we give real answers to real questions from teens and young adults about relationships, consent, dating violence, and more. My name is Jessica Scoltetti. I'm an outreach and community engagement manager at Safe and Sound Somerset. Uh, We are Somerset County, New Jersey's lead organization for domestic and sexual violence services and prevention. And we have free services for children, teens, and adults. So today we are joined by Safe and Sound Somerset volunteer, Ella Blank, who goes to the University of Maryland. Hi, Ella. Thanks again for being here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so um, we have a question here that's really important and comes up a lot in our work. I think you would agree. Mm-hmm. Um, so the question we got from a youth, a group of youth was, why don't people believe victims or survivors of sexual assault? And I thought, let's throw it to you first. What do you think about this question? Yeah, I think that sometimes people don't believe the victims of sexual assault because there definitely is a prominent victim blaming culture that is in our society. That could stem from a lot of different things, which I know we'll get into um, media, a lot of different things. But I think one example that I did want to bring up with this question is an example of victim blaming that happens in our society. It has happened in the past is Denim Day is a prime example of it. Um, If you don't know what that is, basically there was a case where um, a woman who was assaulted, they were claiming that it couldn't have been assault because she was wearing skin tight jeans and uh, the person could not get the jeans off without her assistance. And in reality, that is a very big victim blaming example. Um, You know, as you said, we hear this a lot in our field about, oh, Um, They were too drunk. They were wearing something that was um, leading some idea. I don't know how to word that. Um, And lots of victim blaming phrases, which I think when people hear them, that's what is a huge reason why people tend to not believe victims is because they hear these things and these excuses and they believe them. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can talk more about what goes into victim blaming and why these things are thought, um, if you have any ideas about that. Yeah, I I think some of the questions I've heard are um, kind of related to what you just said, were like, why did they go to that party if they knew? Or like, why were they wearing that? Like, Mm -hmm. those are questions that some people tend to go to immediately without even considering that what really happened here was that somebody decided to assault another person. You know, Mm -hmm. sexual assault isn't about what someone wore or what party they went to or what their relationship is, or it's, it's about power and control. And the reality too, is that a lot of people who experience abuse and sexual violence um, are not the people we see in media. So we, we talk about this a lot with, with, groups of teens like think about the kinds of people in tv shows and the people who are often on screen it's often like young beautiful people that we would consider having a certain kind of quality right that makes them perfect for television or whatever that might be and there's nothing wrong with that but there's lots and lots of people unfortunately who also are sexually assaulted because they're seen as vulnerable and that can include people who are um, disabled people who are elderly people who are um, any gender any sexual orientation it's not just you know people we see in media or or in the news Um, so that's just something I wanted to mention is that that's really problematic is that we think that some people think that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also wanted to mention too, really quickly, that some of the other questions I hear from people with victim blaming are like, um, you know, well, I, I can't see that person ever hurting you, right? Like, I don't, how could they hurt them? They're so charming, or they're so wonderful. So um, that's, that's another one I've heard a lot of. Yeah, I've definitely heard a lot of that too. And I think that emphasizes the point that sometimes it can be hard for another person who sees a situation like this to 
believe that something like that would happen. It may be hard for them to process that someone they know would do that or someone they know would go through that. Maybe they've been through something themselves and that can be hard for them to understand and things like that, those questions um, can make someone, they maybe they don't even mean to victim blame, but it can happen if someone can't comprehend what was going on, um, either due to their own past traumas, due to a lot of different reasons. It's definitely something that does happen. Definitely. Um, and I, another thing that, that we were talking about before we recorded, um, was the fact that when we talk about why don't people believe, um, some people hear about false reports and then that kind of gets into their head and they're like, oh, well, that one was false, or I heard that one was false or whatever it might be. Right. Um, and the reality is that between two to 10% of reported rape cases, and this is across many different national studies because this is very hard to measure, only about two to 10% of rape cases are that are reported are found to be false, which actually means that 90 to 98% of reported rape cases are real. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it that way, the thing is we hear about false reports because they're so rare and when we hear about them we start to think about them and we start to think oh well that one was false so then the rest you know what i'm saying like some people might think that and the reality is there's also so many cases that are never reported at all because i'm sure you can imagine some of the reasons why people don't report um, and maybe we can talk about that too. But I think media does tend to focus on false reports, but we're not even seeing the large majority, thousands and thousands of cases that are real reports of assault and the ones that aren't reported at all. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Like you said, the small number of cases that are false are what gets shown in the media because they are so rare, but people take that and you know, run with that idea. And I think it's important to know that you can't disregard what everyone else says and think that everyone is coming up with these false cases just because of the ones that you hear in the media. And I think it's important, again, to emphasize that at the, that you're supposed to um, believe the victim first and foremost. And sometimes people do overlook that because of the things they see in the medium, because that's what is shown first and foremost. But it's also important to remember that's because it is so rare compared to the 98% of cases that are reported and all the other cases that aren't. So I think that's a super important point to talk about. You're also reminding me of the, the other part we hear, which is like, if it's a man who's reporting sexual assault, there's a lot of people who think that this doesn't happen to men, but that is absolutely not true. Um, men are at a very high risk for sexual assault. Um, I don't have the numbers right in front of me at the moment, but they're high, um, as well as um, a lot of people believe that people who are LGBTQ plus don't experience sexual assault or dating violence or domestic violence. And that's not true either. They're actually more at risk because people see them as vulnerable. It's not their fault, right? But those things also cause people to not believe survivors. And it it, it gets to be this, this big like jumble. And those of us who are in the field of working with survivors and trying to change the way the community sees these things, it can be very hard to pick apart because of these, these things people believe. So like I would just say, I ask people to believe survivors, kind of like what you said, Ella. We believe survivors at Safe and Sound Somerset. We believe when people say that they've been hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely important to believe the survivor first and then go with it rather than falsifying something that someone says and go from there because that wouldn't be helping the people who need the help and like you said um the lgbtq plus community is at higher risk for experiencing sexual assault but i don't think a lot of people know that because what they see in the media is you know typical like female sexual assault they see those false cases, they never hear of other types of things as much. And I think that that plays a large role in the way people think. And like you said, it's very hard to 
um, change or we try to change what people understand by educating and letting people know that it's not just, you know, stereotypical, oh, women report false cases for X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. That were done by a man, right? Like that's not yeah. always the case, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it sounds like it comes right back to media a lot of times, but we all have the power to kind of deconstruct those media messages that we're getting and really think about the statistics that national studies show and that domestic violence and sexual violence organizations are trying to, you know, get out there. Um, and, you know, as we ask you to believe survivors, just know that our helpline is available. Um, the Safe and Sound Somerset Helpline is 24-7. It's confidential. Um, we work with survivors in Somerset County. And if you're not in Somerset County, we can transfer you to your county's organization. Our number is 866-685-1122. It's at the bottom of the screen if you're watching on video today. Um, but otherwise, uh, is there anything else, Ella, that you wanted to mention about when people don't believe before we go? Um, I think just tie it also back to the point that sexual assault can happen to anyone, anywhere. I think some people, if they have pre-assumptions about a certain person, um, it can be hard for them to believe that something like that would happen. But at the end of the day, it's not something that happens to certain people or is selective for certain people it can really happen to anyone so I think being able to believe the survivor first super important um with that question totally and a lot of times too it's people that someone knows it's not usually like a stranger in the dark as they say um so that's another thing I think that comes into play when we were talking about like believing is like oh that person would never do that you know um, so I just wanted to add that in because that's a really common myth that people say about sexual violence. Um, but thank you so much, Ella, for, for providing your thoughts on this and for being a part of our conversation today. Of course. Thank you for having me.